Shalom and welcome to Branch of Israel. This is Rabbi Roger coming to you from God's beautiful country, Israel. In the Bible, some things may not be as they appear. This is why I've mentioned in the past about never trusting your translation, but learn to dig into the true meaning of what is being said. Then again, there are other times where a true deep understanding of the text from a Judaical view will give you an insight that no lexicon will. For example, recently I was talking with a tour guide who mentioned to me roosters were not in Jerusalem during Jesus' time, to which I emphatically replied, Sure they are. I had been woken many times by them. Plus, it clearly states that the rooster crowed when Peter denied Jesus three times. Now here is where the digging from a Judaical view comes in. It appears in the Mishnah, the written form of the oral law, that chickens were not allowed in Jerusalem. The reason for this? They may pick up the garbage that imparts ritual impurity and bring it into contact with sacrificial meat, rendering it ritually impure. So what was to stop someone outside of the walled city from having chickens? Nothing, except that there was nothing out there with the exception of some graves. Okay, what about the Romans? After all, they were not held to judicial law. True, except uh, they were soldiers and not common folk. There was a term used in biblical times that would give some insight into what Peter really could have heard. In the Greek, the word translated as cock crow literally means cock, man, or husband. And I even found one translation metaphorically to mean trumpeter. However, there appears to be a caveat to this. This guy told me the case for the cox crow being doesn't really rely on the rabbinic ban on the chickens in the city, though that was almost certainly the case, but rather, more importantly, on the fact that we know this phrase was Judean slang for the trumpeting from the temple. Furthermore, even though the Mishnaic literature is later by a century or more, Jews had been kicked out of Jerusalem entirely following the revolts. So if they have a memory of this, it is almost certainly an early one. There's no reason for them to invent it. What he is referring to is the blowing of the shofar, or trumpet, as it is called in English. According to the Mishnah, at an early hour of the morning, at no precise time, the shofar was blown with a different sound to it, as if to sound like a rooster crowing. In other words, it was not an actual rooster call, but a call of duty for the priest to clean out the ashes from the altar. According to Mark Turnage in his article, Sometimes a Rooster is Not a Rooster, excavations along the southwestern corner of the Temple Mount in Jerusalem uncovered a stone bearing a Hebrew inscription to the place, literally house, of trumpeting. It seems reasonable that this stone marked the location from which cockcrow sounded. So remember to always to study and show yourself approved. For more teachings and information, you may visit branchofisrael.com. This is Rabbi Roger coming to you from Israel. Thank you so much for listening. Lehi throat. Goodbye or see you again.